गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द एम्फीवियन फिजियोलॉजी सीरीज वन आई विल स्टार्ट विद अ मोस्ट सिंपल वन दैट इज अ सिंपल मसल ट्विच कार्व सो इट कम्स इन द एम्फीवियन फिजियोलॉजी एक्सपेरिमेंटल सेक्शन इन योर एग्जाम सो दिस इज द एक्सपेरिमेंटल सेटअप actually what is this amphibian physiology experiment here we want to see the properties of skeletal muscle in the uh, experimental setup so from the chapter of properties of skeletal muscle we know that skeletal muscle force of contraction can be changed by intensity of stimulus frequency of stimulus temperature by initial length of muscle fiber so all these properties are known to us so how actually we got the proof of this we actually proved all these in this sim very simple experimental setup where we place the nerve muscle preparation on the uh, myograph board and we give the electrical stimulation to the muscle and nerve fiber and we see the what is happening uh, to the uh, what is the effect of electrical stimulation on the muscle so this is the experimental setup where we will discuss it in detail in my next videos for this uh, simple muscle twitch curve just a brief idea so in this uh, experimental setup we will have three types of instruments one instrument that will be uh, will help us to give electrical stimulation to the nerve muscle preparation so why we are using electrical stimulation not physical and chemical that i will discuss in my next videos so we give the electrical stimulus for uh, this time you just remember and we have some appliances which supply this electrical current so we have two types of circuit in this experimental setup one is a primary circuit another is the secondary circuit so the primary circuit it will start with a current source that is a 6 volt dc current source from it you can see the wires are going to the primary key from the primary key it will go to an instrument that is known as the chymograph chymograph is actually the recorder from the chymograph it will come to the primary coil of the dubois remond induction coil from the uh, primary coil it will again go back to the source so it will complete the circle so this this is the primary circuit when the contact box and the striker at the chymograph they will come in contact with each other so this primary circuit will be complete and if the primary key is on so there will be current flow into this primary circuit now the secondary come to the secondary circuit <coughs> secondary circuit it will start with this black part of the dubois remond induction coil that is the secondary key this secondary key is attached with the short circuit key and from the short circuit key you can see the electrodes are going directly to the myograph board where actually the nerve muscle preparation is placed so whenever there is current in the primary coil this current will be induced into the secondary coil and if the short circuit key is off then this current will go will move in the secondary circuit and will uh, with the help of the electrode we can give this apply this current on the nerve muscle preparation so this is the experimental setup some instruments are related to the electrical stimulus for example this dubois remond induction coil current source primary key short circuit key some instruments in this setup are the recorder for example the chymograph and some instruments are miscellaneous instruments like this myograph board with the stand just have a cl closer view of this myograph board and the stand where we have placed the nerve muscle preparation so we have taken out the gastrocnemius muscle from toad and with the sciatic now we have fixed the muscle uh, with the help of uh, with the help of a pin and muscle and the knee joint is actually dissected out so the knee joint is actually fixed with the pin on this myograph board the tendinous end of the gastrocnemius muscle is attached with the uh, in the after loaded position with the stylus okay and electrode you can see it is touching the sciatic now so whenever there is um, when the primary key is on and in the primary circuit and the sh uh, short circuit key is off in the secondary circuit so first there will be current flow 
when there is the touch of contact button with the striker in the primary circuit this current will be induced into the secondary circuit and uh, that will via the electrode it will uh, stimulate this sciatic nerve okay now uh, there are uh, certain questions may be asked with it so why we are taking frog or toad because it is um, the preferred animal because of its easy availability it is harmless and long time in vitro outside body tissue survival without any extra oxygen and temperature control so these are the advantages of taking amphibian animals and among the amphibians toad is, toad is preferred because it is easily available and it is harmless now why gastrocnemius muscle because it is a bulky muscle it gives a good amplitude and it cannot be fatigued easily and the why sciatic now because is preferred because it is a long now so it can it is easy to mount now just a the bit of twitch what actually this muscle twitch is so uh, we we are studying about the simple muscle twitch curve so what is a twitch when uh, with the help of this electrical instruments we are giving applying a single action potential to this um, uh, sciatic now so there will be in the muscle there will be a brief contraction followed by a relaxation so this thing is known as the simple muscle twitch curve in this experimental setup we will record this okay so the duration of twitch it will vary uh, with the type of muscle so here we are taking the gastrocnemius muscle so this is finally the simple muscle twitch curve after giving stimulation we get this curve so when in the examination hall you will get this curve so you have to say first thing what is this curve this is the simple muscle twitch curve that is the point number one number two what are the different phases of this curve first phase is the latent phase that is point of stimulation from point of stimulation to the onset of contraction this gap is known as the latent phase then we have the contraction phase then we have the relaxation phase okay so mostly we have three phases latent phase contraction phase and the relaxation phase don't uh, confuse it with the latent phase of the action potential so when we were talking about the action potential action potential is actually the electrical property here the muscle contraction and relaxation is the mechanical property as a result of electrical stimulation or action potential when we are getting the contraction and relaxation of muscle that is the muscle twitch so in case of action potential phases of action potential you have seen that latent phase that is the cause of that latent phase was different but in this mechanical um, uh, event the cause of latent phase i think you know uh, if you know the mechanism of contraction of skeletal muscle i i am this explaining it in my next slide so uh, latent phase contraction phase relaxation phase after that you can see a wave like pattern that is a physiological curve it has nothing to do with the contraction of the muscle it happens due to the inertia of the stylus another thing is that at the central portion of the curve we will see the force of contraction or the height of contraction so what is this curve this is simple muscle twitch curve what are the phases latent phase contraction phase and relaxation phase after that we, we are getting a, a wave like pattern that is known as the physiological curve it is due to inertia of the uh, stylus now why this latent phase is happening uh, that we will see in this picture we can see that why the latent phase is uh, happening because we know when uh, the action potential it comes to the uh, terminal button of the nerve fiber so there will be some neuromuscular transmission as a result of that at the motor end plate of the muscle there will be generation of end plate potential so end plate potential will generate the action potential at adjacent sarcolemma which will come down so this is step number one is the we can see here the release of acetylcholine step number two is the generation of end plate potential step number three is the generation of action potential which is coming down through the t tubules at the t tubule step number four you can see there is a receptor which is known as dihydropyridine receptor or the dhp receptor so with the help of its food processes it is attached with the ryanodrin receptor of the sarcoplasm terminal cistern of the sarcoplasmic reticulum so whenever there is depolarization some conformational change of this dhp receptor will happen so the food processes will be withdrawn as a result of that the calcium will uh, come out through the ryanodrin receptor 
and this calcium will bind with the troponin C as you all know. So, there will be conformational changes of the tropomyosin C, uh, tropomyosin and the uh, actin binding site of the myosin will be exposed. So, there will be actin and myosin cross bridge formation and there will be shortening with the help of ATP. So, a power stroke. So, this whole thing starting from the giving electrical stimulation to the onset of contraction all these processes will take some time this is the cause of the latent phase okay that is that we know now after the latent phase we have the contraction phase and the relaxation phase and the height of contraction or the force of contraction now what are the factors that regulate this force of contraction it can be asked so mostly the four factors are responsible uh, uh, for the change or height of contraction so height of contraction it will depend upon the intensity of stimulus if we increase the intensity so height of contraction will increase if we increase the frequency of stimulus uh, by keeping all other factors constant so the uh, obviously the height of con uh, contraction will be increased it will also depend upon temperature okay if the temperature of the setup is increased so there will be increased force of contraction and initial length of the muscle fiber if it is increased if the muscle is in the more preloaded condition so there will be more force of contraction and so these are the phases and what are the causes uh, that can change the height or force of contraction uh, so this is about the simple muscle twitch curve and we know the phases so uh, in addition to that you can see there is our wave like line below this curve uh, which is denoted as the time tracing. So what is actually this time tracing? This time tracing is taken by with the help of a tuning fork with a specific frequency, frequency of 100 cycles per second. Okay so if this um, um, tuning fork is vibrated and it uh, it is touched with the rotating drum so you will get a um, uh, wave like pattern of time tracing like this okay so this is the, uh, the way by which we actually take the time tracing so we uh, first vibrate the tuning fork and after vibration we uh, touch this uh, vibrating tuning fork to the uh, rotating drum and there will be a wave like pattern will be generated like this okay so from uh, the frequency of the tuning fork we know that it is 100 hertz that is 100 cycles per minute per second so if uh, 100 cycles will cycle will take one one second so one cycle will take 1 by 100 that is 0 0.01 second so we can say that from one crest to another crest the distance it will indicate 0 0.01 second so why we are taking this time tracing we want to calculate the duration of all these phases how we can calculate now we have to just count the crests in each phase <clears throat> suppose uh, in the latent phase we can have we, we can see here we have two crests so we know that one crest it is equal equivalent to 0 0.01 second so two crests means the duration of latent phase is 0 0.02 second what about the contraction phase we can see four uh, crests uh, in the contraction phase okay here in this curve so uh, that uh, duration of contraction is 0 0.04 second what about the relaxation we are getting five crests so it is 0 0.01 into five that is 0 0.05 seconds so this is a simple muscle twitch curve now if we change the temperature the durations may change if we change the other settings the these durations can also change also the force of contraction will also can be changed okay so if it comes in the examination what are the things that you need to say first is the what is the curve simple muscle twitch curve second is what are the phases and uh, what is physiological curve height of contraction is indicated by what line and what are the factors that can affect the height of force of contraction and what is this time tracing and how can we calculate different phases now the related theory uh, we take is the mechanism of contraction of skeletal muscle and also they may ask in the, the experimental setup how many circuits are there and what type of animal you are taking which muscle which now and why thank you